Hello, this is Daryl from House for All Nations International Campus. Thank you so much for being here and, and watching this sermon. Uh, it is laid upon our hearts that this sermon would be used um, so that your love and affection for Jesus and the church would grow. In no way um, does this replace the church that God's placed you and the shepherd, uh, the pastor that God has placed in your life to shepherd and take care of your soul. Um, but I, I pray that you would continue to join your church um, uh, where, where God is preached and proclaimed there. And so God bless you as you watch this. I pray that you enjoy this. God bless. How is everybody doing? Yeah? So um, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Who's here for the, there's, I think there's some people who may be here for the first time. Um, welcome. If you're joining here for the first time, um, just, just give a wave or, or thumbs up. By the way, um, what I would love to do um, with you today is, um, because we're, we're intentionally using Zoom, to have our services rather than YouTube and Vimeo and, and all the other um, uh, uh, platforms. The reason why is so that we can get some feedback so we can see the sense of community here. And so as I preach and as I teach, as I, as I share with you, um, if I could get some engagement, um, if, if there's an amen, like put up your thumbs up. Um, there's some reaction. If um, some of you here are new to Zoom, you can put your thumbs up just like that. Um, uh, and and if, if so, so please, uh, uh, interact with me in that way. Um, so once again, thank you so much for those who are here for the first time and those who call this your family uh, and you're here as this is your local church. Um, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome again. So good to worship together with you. Um, it is uh, really uh, different times at this moment and how we do service and how we worship together, but we want to continue to maintain the communication with each one of you here. So before going into the sermon, I want to just let you guys know um, if any of you here are, are going through a challenging time and difficult times, we're here as a church. I want to make sure that you know that we want to begin to, or we want to continue to, or maybe it is begin to, but we want to continue um, to to be the church and not just say things and be hypocrites about it and not do it, but we actually want to do things for you. We want to go and serve you and love you. That's our goal. That's our intention for you. And so, so if you have any needs, if you have any, any, any thoughts um, or you're like, man, I feel lonely, please reach out to us. Please, please reach out to us. Or for those, maybe you're, you're finding it hard because uh, uh, maybe your paycheck hasn't arrived yet or you, you don't have a job. Let us know. We want to be here for you. We want to be here with you. And I, I don't guarantee that we can do a lot, um, but what we can do, we'll try our best to do. God's blessed us amazingly in this season. Some others, you're finding it challenging. And so we want to be a church and help one another out in this season. Yeah? Can I get an amen? Thumbs up. Amen? Yeah? All righty. Cool, cool, cool. And so there's been a few people that we've been trying to support and, and do some groceries, and, and, and um, uh, we've been doing that for a few people here. Um, so don't, please, please, please don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. I want to thank also people who've been actually giving to our family. Um, it recently was my birthday, and if some of you follow my Instagram, some of you crazy people came over to my place and and went in your cars and, and you surprised me totally. And I know not all of you could come and you would if you could, maybe not all of you, I'm not sure if Akel would, but um, that's fine. Um, you see you're laughing there. But, but yeah, I mean, I mean, thank you so much for, I, I just feel so loved. And there are actually other people from other churches who um, Instagram messaged me, DM me or whatever you call it and said, you're so loved, right? And I'm like, don't you do that with your pastor, right? So, so thank you guys so much for um, loving on me. Um, and, and so as you continue to love on one another, um, let's see that we actually be the church. As I've mentioned in the past few weeks, it's time for us to stop going to church, meaning stop only going to church and, and, and being consumers and the church, but it's, it's time for us to be the church. Everybody say, be the church. No matter where you are in your rooms right now, say, be the church. Yeah, I see you, Tristan. I see that. I see you mouthing it out. Be the church. Good. I want us to be the church and ask, and maybe for some of us here, we're wondering, well, I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it means to be the church, but that's why you're here today. That's why we're here today to grow together, to learn together, to encourage one another. 
And so I want you to, uh, what we're going to do today, um, this is a standalone sermon. And what I mean by that is it's not a sermon series, um, but we're going to go to a sermon series next week. And I'm so pumped up and excited about it. Um, we're going to go through the, the, the book of, not the book of, but, but we're going to go through a chapter in Psalms. We're going to go through a chapter in Psalms, and we're going to go through that for the next six weeks, um, starting next week. And it's Psalms 23. We're just going to go through it verse by verse uh, in Psalms 23. And I'm so excited because I believe that God is going to say something to us. I believe that God is going to say something to each one of you here as we dive in and, and begin to trust in God more and, and begin to open up our minds and our hearts to what he has to say to us in this very weird, awkward, unprecedented times. And so I've been repeating this week after week. Um, but for those of you who are here for the first time, um, I, I would like to encourage you to prepare yourself well, because like me, I can get so distracted with things around me, um, like my phone, and my, my, my phone could be a distraction to me, so I, I turn off my phone. My, my kids are a distraction to me, and there's not much I can do, but Reti has got them, and, um, but there's so many things around me that can be a distraction to me. But in this moment, would you take this posture and say, God, would you speak to me in this moment? God, if you are real, if you, if you are truly a God who cares for us, would you speak to me in my heart? And in this moment, would you open up your minds to, to receive from him, open up your hearts to receive from him? And so God, that is exactly what I ask. Would you meet with us? And Lord, when I say us, I'm not talking about them and me, but Lord, us. Speak to me as well in this moment, oh Lord. Thank you so much for your word and scripture. I pray as we open it up, would you speak to us ever so powerfully, but ever so lovingly as well. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Once again, um, your thumbs up are an amen to me. Yeah, excellent. Cool. Um, so, um, once again, if you're here, um, what, how I preach and how I ask God to, to speak to us, um, is I believe that God speaks to us as a church specifically, um, to a specific people, a specific time, uh, and a specific message. I mean, that's why like each one of you here, you can be going on YouTube and watching other sermons, amazing sermons, whether they're live or you just Google whatever you want to hear and you'd receive that. I mean, that's good. And it's good to grow in your knowledge of who God is and all of that. But I believe that why we gather here together right now is because God has a specific message for you and I. God has a specific message for you as the people of God in this local body, House for All Nations International Church. And if you are part of another church, um, this is supplementary to what you have uh, as, as your local church. If you don't have a church, I, I invite you and welcome you to be part of our community here. But I believe, again, that this is a specific message for us as a community for a specific season in this coronavirus season for you, House for Nations International Campus. And I declare this week after week, starting when we first started the, the, the church campus in 2000. 18, I believe it was, um, in, in October, I think we, we did the big launch. Uh, but I've been saying this um, fairly frequently, and I say this. This is my declaration, and I pray that this would be your declaration too. As the church, we did not come today to see a concert. We did not come today to hear a motivational speaker, but we came today to meet with God and meet with his people, you. I came today to be a testimony to my friends, my family. I see my mom there um, who don't know Jesus yet or want to experience Jesus more. I came today to give as Jesus has given himself to me. I'm not Jesus, guys, and I'm not the Savior. I'm broken and I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, and Jesus is my Savior. Today is about worshiping Jesus and making him known and famous among the nations. I'm here today because I love God and I love you and I love the community that God's placed us in. And I love those of you who also who are joining us here for the first time. We've been praying for you 
And I pray that God would speak to you as well today. So, um, uh, I've been going through a sermon series for the past few weeks. Um, and the last week we celebrated Jesus because he's alive, amen? Jesus is alive. And that's why we're here. That's why we celebrate on Sunday because on Sunday he rose. But, but that aside, well, not that side, that's like center of everything. But prior to that, we've been talking about a sermon series called Fear and Trembling. What has happened in the world of the Christians, and I would say maybe this is just our local community, and I hope it is, but, but what has happened in my mind and as I grow up, what has happened is I have diminished in my fear and trembling towards God. What I mean by that is I take God's ever so lightly, I take him ever so casually for all he's done, what he's done on the cross that we've celebrated Good Friday and his resurrection. For many of us, that may just be a story. But we need to be reminded that that is history, but it's not history that has once happened and that's it, but it's history that continues to work in us, in the present. And so that's why we emphasize fear and trembling, that we need to remember who God is and who we are before God. And so I, I, I don't want us to have received that and learned that and respond to that and say, you know what, that's done, that's put on the shelf, now let's move on to the next thing. The danger is as we move from sermon series to sermon series, we think we've graduated from this and then, and then we put it on the, show, on the shelf and then we're saying, okay, what's next for me now? Because I'm all good. No, 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 no. Let's continue to respond in, in, in fear and trembling to an awesome almighty God who's loved us, who, who's, who sacrifices life for us and who sent us the Holy Spirit that we may know him more, experience him more, and be a witness. And so um, that said, um, we're now going to go on the standalone series, which is I'm going to go through the book of Philippians. And so if you have your Bibles, and I actually encourage you to grab your Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, please let me know, and we'll figure out something so we can get a Bible to you. I think Amazon's still running, and and we want to we wanna supply you with Bibles. One of my hobbies, um, I've been doing this budgeting um, on, uh, with, together with some friends. It's called Every Dollar. Um, and in my budget, one of the things in my, in my budget um, is uh, Bible mm -hmm. hunting. I call it Bible hunting. So if you don't have a Bible, um, please let me know. Um, and then we'll buy it together. And then Dimas will pay for it. Amen, Dimas? He's like, what? No. <laughs> All right. So um, open up your Bibles to Philippians. Oh, he has his thumbs up. Perfect. Um, all righty. Okay. Everybody still following along? Everybody still good? Yeah? Excellent. I see you, Jessica. Yeah. Excellent. Great. I see some thumbs up there. Thanks, Gabby. Aaron. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mel. Oh, yeah. Melon. Oh, Melon. Yeah. Sean. Cool. All right. Philippians. The book of Philippians. If you have physical Bibles in front of you, grab your physical Bibles. If you have your electronics, um, I say this as a joke, but I sort of mean it to repent. Uh, grab an actual Bible. But if you don't have one, use whatever's best for you. I, I do use electronic Bibles to search for things. Um, I thank God that I grew up in the Google age so I can Google stuff and Bible verses that I've memorized. I can just Google and find it in, in my Bible. So I'm going to go through the book of Philippians. Now, for those of you who've been journeying with me um, prior, um, actually, I'm not even sure if it's prior to the international campus, um, but I think we might have combined in this moment, um, or maybe not, but in 2018, the beginning of 2018, I actually preached a sermon series on Philippians. And so for some of you here today, this might be, this might be a review for you. But if you're like me, and I'm very forgetful, I need reminders after reminders. And every time I open scripture, even though it's the same scripture, and I'll give an example, my favorite verse how many of you here know my favorite verse? What is it? What's the chapter? What's the chapter? Show of fingers. What's the chapter of my favorite verse? John what? Yeah, John 3. Yeah, Jessica. Yeah, John 3 what? What is it? John 3.16. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 1.6. Yeah, 1.6, right? John 3.16. Many of you know this verse. Maybe it confused you because I had an Insta post, a uh, story post, which I said, well, there's this another one. Um, but that is my ultimate favorite verse, John 3.16. But even that verse that I've known all, like, from a very young kid, I, I opened it, like, a, a week, couple weeks ago. I'm like, wow, God so loved the world he gave. Like, there was something that popped up to me. 
And so Philippians, we're going to go through the book of Philippians right now. We're going to go through the whole book of Philippians right now. But we're going to, I'm going to highlight some verses. And again, if you're here, oh, by the way, by the way, um, just so you know, um, uh, I don't always go with the norm of how maybe preaching should be. Uh, and I, I don't say that lightly and I don't say that casually as in like, oh, well, I'm just going to do whatever I want. But what I want to make sure is I want to be as intentional as I possibly can be with you. I want to be intentional with your growth, intentional with, with hearing from God and seeing what God, where God wants to lead us. And so today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to prepare you guys. Today will not be a teaching where it's like point one, two, three, four. Great. That's a great lesson. I got something today. That's not what it's going to be like today. There may be some of that today, but today what we will do is I'm going to walk you through the Bible and we're going to learn together because my hope, my hope is in this week, you will engage in the word of God in reading Philippians. We're not, we're, we're not going to be reading everything in here, but I, I, I ask that you would engage in reading the book of Philippians. It's not long. There's not, it's, there, there's not much in there, but that you would engage and ask God, God, speak to me through the book of Philippians. We're going to look at an overview today, but I pray that you would engage together with this community in this church and say, God, speak to us. Now, why the book of Philippians? Um, I'll, I'll, give a, I'll give a backstory first uh, uh, on this first, and then, and then I'll, I'll, di- I'll dive why Philippians, okay? So first, first uh, about Philippians, background work, context about Philippians. Um, okay, no, no, I'll, I'll just tell you why I want to do this. Because the question that I have for you is this. Who here and how many of you here, show of hands, um, want to experience joy in this unprecedented time? How many of you here in this moment, you want to experience joy in this very confusing, isolating time? Come on, show of hands, show of hands. Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up. I see it all around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, engage with me, engage with me. And again, be intentional. If you don't, if you don't want to, that's totally fine. You're just, just here for the ride, just here to, to receive. But how many of you, again, I want to ask you this question. How many of you here want to experience joy? Joy. And here's the thing. What I don't want to throw, out, throw at you is this. What I don't want to throw at you is this. If you want joy then just follow Jesus. That's it. Because the truth is, that is the answer. At the end of my sermon, I am going to say, if you want true joy, then chase after or follow Jesus. That's, gonna, that, that's it. But what my desire is, is that you, after we go through this book of Philippians very briefly, hopefully in, in just like 20, 30 minutes, hopefully, pray for me, uh, but I, I pray that after we've gone through the book of Philippians, that it's not only in your minds like, okay, I know the church answer is Jesus. I know. Give me something better. But I hope that at the end of this whole thing, you will fall in love more and say, I really want this Jesus. This Jesus that Paul talks about, that Paul and Timothy writes about, and is telling this church in Philippi, I want that. I want, I desire that. So it's not just theoretical, but there's a desire that like, huh, I really want that. And that's my desire. And maybe today is not the day that you're going to experience that. But I pray that as you dive into this and you be as intentional as you possibly can be at home, opening up scripture and saying, okay, God, if it's true, I'm going to do this. Philippians 1, speak to me, oh God. And then you read it at home. Slowly. It's not a checklist that you just want, okay, I just got to get it done. But you read it and you're like, God, speak to me. And as you read it day by day, I pray that this desire of knowing God would, would happen in your life and you experience joy. Why do I say this? Because joy is not just theoretical for me. Again, I'm not trying to elevate myself higher than anybody else here. But I, I, I experienced the joy of Jesus because of walking, walking him with him is so beautiful. But let's, let's, let's forget about me. Let's go, let's, let's dive into scripture, Philippians. Background context. And as I mentioned this, just open up your Bibles to Philippians. But here's some of the context and, and some info that uh, Martin's going to help put on the screen for me. Um, 
If you want to master joy, then if you want to experience joy, then you master the principles that are written in Philippians and then it'll be yours. It's only four chapters, 104 verses. And if you do it by verses, then it's just like 20 ish uh, verse if you do, uh, uh, in five days, but four chapters. I actually, just before I preached, uh, before, before the, the service today, I read over the whole thing again. It doesn't take long. It was probably written in AD 62, written by Paul um, while he was in prison in Rome. He was isolated and he was in prison. What a blessing the prison has done for us because of Paul being in prison. He was writing these letters that we could grow as a church. Philippi, the church in Philippi, was the first church that Paul founded in Europe. Philippians, um, this book is different than any other letters that, that Paul wrote because this is the only letter that Paul doesn't criticize the readers. He doesn't criticize those that he sent this letter to. It's really a book of encouragement, a letter, a letter of encouragement. And so as you read this, I pray that you would be encouraged. As I speak to you in this moment and we read through this, um, you would be encouraged I pray that in Jesus' name. I really pray that. Philippians, this book, is probably the best picture. And as we look at the church in Philippi and how Paul is addressing the people in in, in Philippi, the book of Philippians, this letter, is probably the best picture we have for a mature church. Say mature church. Say mature church. This is the best picture that we have for a mature church and what it looks like as a church and what it looks like for a maturing group of people. And so this is a great letter, letter of Philippians to look at and say, hey, I, I want to be more like that church. I think this is an area that I can grow in. So the writer, um, if you open up your Bibles, the first uh, verse, it says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. So Paul and Timothy is the one who's addressing this to the church in Philippi. Who's Paul? Well, here's the thing. If you looked at Paul before he met Jesus, if you looked at his background, he wouldn't be someone who you would associate with joy. Paul would not be a person that you would associate with joy. Prior to his name being Paul, his name was Saul, and he was Saul of Tarsus, from from Tarsus. He was a legalistic uh, Pharisee. And what that basically means is, if you put it in our context, what it can look like is maybe some of us here, uh, or maybe you know some people who are legalistically a Christian or legalistically a a Catholic, legalistically a believer, but all we do is we just follow all these regulations and say, okay, well, as a Christian, I'm supposed to be doing this, 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 and that's all you are in your walk with God. That was Paul. He was legalistically a Pharisee. Now, in Luke chapter 9, uh, no, no, I think in, in, I think Luke chapter 9, you find him persecuting Christians. Paul, or his name was Saul, Saul was killing Christians. But something happened. Something happened to him that caused something to happen in him. Something happened to him And then something happened in him. And in that moment, joy was planted. C.S. Lewis says this, joy is the serious business of heaven. Joy is the serious business of heaven. And so this idea of joy, uh, whether it's said, said, the, the Philippians says joy or rejoicing or gladness is mentioned 19 times in this very short letter that Paul writes. Now, the second person that we addressed earlier, there was Paul and there was Timothy. Now, Timothy is another guy that you wouldn't associate with this word joy. You wouldn't naturally associate him with joy. Now, it's, why? Because Timothy grew up in a tough home, in a tough situation at home, a tough home situation. He, he, he grew up with mixed parentage. Some of you here are mixed parentage as well. But it, what, how he grew up, his mother was Jewish, but his dad was an unbeliever. Now his grandma and grandmother, uh, his, gra- his, his grandma and mother was, uh, their names were Eunice and Louis. Um, and they actually came to, 
to Christ. They came to Jesus. Um, his, his dad, not a religious, he was an unbelieving Greek. Um, but when Paul came to their town, um, the mom and grandma of Timothy um, heard the gospel. And Timothy was there as well. Timothy at that time was about the age of 15. All right. So as I was reading this uh, again, I was like, oh, Timothy, we have a Tim here. Um, I don't think he's 15, but I, rem I remember him as always 15 or even younger than that. But now Timothy's a little bit older, um, but he now experiences also this joy. Again, looking at their backgrounds and their circumstances and where they came from, they should not be having this joy. They shouldn't be writing this. They shouldn't have the, the prerequisites to write this letter to the church in Philippi because everything that their history said, this is why you shouldn't have joy. But they experienced something. The real reason for joy in the lives of Paul and Timothy is described in the very next section. I read earlier just the very first line of verse 1, but says this, To all the saints in Christ Jesus, or oh, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. Servants of Christ Jesus. Or if you look at the footnote, if you have a footnote there, um, some would say bond servant, which means a person who is bound in service without any wage, a slave. A person who's owned by someone else. Now, the reason they were joyful is because they were serving Jesus. They were a slave to Jesus. Now, I've mentioned this again in the previous sermon series, and this was one of the things I mentioned over and over and over again, week after week, but this is going to be a standalone sermon, so uh, I'm just going to say this one time. The joy is never found in direct pursuit. Joy is never found in direct pursuit. It's a byproduct of something. In other words, we don't chase after joy. Joy is not something that we chase after, but joy is a product of pursuing Christ and his will. And so if you are here today and you're like, well, I want joy, we're, I'm not going to teach you or I'm not going to preach in, in how to chase after joy because it's a byproduct of something else, of following Christ. And so once again, the question for you, if you are a Christian or if you're not a Christian, I want to thank you if you're joining us and you, you do not believe in Jesus and that's not your stance right now. I, I pray that you would take that stance one day or maybe today. But I, I'm just so glad that you're here. Again, I, I say this every, just about every week. Um, this church is not just for Christians. It's for Christians and non-Christians. But that we would all grow in knowing Jesus a little bit more. And so what's the question that we, I have for all of us here, whether you're a Christian or non-Christian? How do we have joy in, in this unprecedented time? How do you and I have joy in this unprecedented time? I always um, ask everybody to stand up with me and read a portion of scripture. So even though we're going to go through the um, book of Philippians, would you just join me in standing up um, wherever you are, if you are able to? Um, just in reverence of the word of God, just remember that the scripture is above us and not below us and that we want to honor uh, um, scripture. And again, I'm not saying this legalistically, uh, but just as a sign um, together, why don't we do that? Stand up together and we'll read Philippians chapter 3, starting verse 7 through 8. Philippians chapter 3, starting verse 7 and 8. And before you read, I'll pray. Oh God, would you speak to us in this moment as we read your word, as we go through scripture after scripture after scripture, speak to us in this moment of God. We long for this joy. We long, Lord, for you to meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's open it up. Philippians 3, 7 through 8. 1, 2, and 3. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I counted everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake. Do I have a bit more there? Yes, continue reading. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ 
Let's read Philippians 4, 19. One, two, three. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So God, would you speak in this moment? Speak to me and through me in this moment, Lord. Thank you. I pray this all in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. All right, please be seated. Okay, so what I'll be doing here today is I want to just engage with you. Again, I'm not here today to teach to you and give you amazing points and, and one pointer and two pointers. But I want us to engage in the word today. Engage in reading the word and I'll give some thoughts and, and share some points in that. So uh, I, I hope this is going to work. Um, I tried it earlier. Um, well, let's try this out. So um, here you go. Great. So I have some verses highlighted, and if you have your Bibles with you, I would ask that you would engage in, in actually highlighting your Bible as well. Um, I want to show you here, if you see this right here, uh, this is how I engage with my Bible. If you see here, again, um, so this is not to, uh, there, see? Just how I engage with my Bible, and whenever I'm going through Scripture and something pops up to me, I just write in it. I just, I just write in it so that I can engage and remember what God's saying to me in that moment. I would actually date them as well. Uh, and so I have dates on some of these and I'm like, oh, this is when God spoke to me and this was a precious moment. I was going through this and this is what God was saying to me. And so would you do that together with me as I go through this um, uh, right now? Uh, are you guys still there with me? Yeah, okay, all right. I have here, it shows as if I've signed out or something. Okay, okay, cool. All righty, uh, there you go. All right, the book of Philippians, the book of Philippians. Um, so here are some verses. I'm not going to go through all the verses, but I've highlighted some verses, and I pray that you would be encouraged by some of these verses. Um, so the first verse that I, 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 I talked about already was, was this one right here. Um, um, here, um, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. Servants of Christ Jesus, a major point that they're making. And as they begin this, they're saying, okay, you know what? I'm not here to lecture you because I'm so good, but I'm here as a servant of Christ Jesus. And as we go down in, in verse six here, he says this, and I am sure of this, that he, he refers to God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Now, I've titled my sermon today, um, if, if uh, yeah, you don't have to pull it up there, um, but I titled my sermon today is this, Unexpected Joy in Unprecedented Times. And what I titled Unexpected, I cross out the un, and it's expected joy in unprecedented times. Now, in this season, you and I may be feeling like, okay, I, God, I don't know what's happening in life, and I'm not sure what's happening in life, but in this verse it says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you, God is doing a good work in you. In this moment where you are at your houses, wherever you are, you're just locked up in your rooms or in your living room, uh, and you're thinking like, man, what's going on here? God is in control. God is sovereign over this situation. He is doing a good work in you. The question is, are you responding to him or not? What's so beautiful in this passage, in this verse right here, it says, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. That means Jesus, God, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, is, he is present in the past, he's present in the present, and he's also present in your future. Now, what can happen, maybe some of you here are thinking, well, it's the moment I become a Christian that he's present in my life. No, no, no. Well, if I trust in him, and then he's going to do a good work in me, like, no. Like, yes, there are some prerequisites to some of the things, but God is in your life and at work in your life. The reason why some of you, not some of you, the reason why you are here and some of you here, you're, you're hearing the gospel. You're going to be hearing the gospel for the first time is because God has actually uh, appointed this time for you to be listening to this because he's asking you to respond to him. And he's going to be doing a good work in you. Let's continue on down. 
And in here it says, if you look at the title here I have here is to live is Christ. Now, Paul goes a little bit crazy here. And the reason why he's crazy, and again, I'm using the, the term very loosely, crazy. He's crazy in love with God. He's crazy, uh, uh, passionate about God uh, because he's seen who God is and how God's worked in his life. And so what he says here is in verse 21 says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In this verse, he's saying, my life is for Christ. And if I die, that is amazing. The truth is for many of you here, how many of us can actually say that? How many of us here were gripped by fear because of the coronavirus? We're gripped by fear because of the news that we hear. But Paul, the guy who's experiencing joy on, on, like just unimaginable joy. He's saying, you know what? For me to live is Christ. And you know what? If I die, I get to be with Jesus. And that's beautiful. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Verse 27. And then later on, he says, only let your matter of life be worthy of the gospel. Of the gospel. Go through the book of Philippians and, and, and circle how many times he says gospel or Jesus and, and how everything is, is grounded in, in Jesus. And this is as Christians, we, as, this is Christians, how we talk about identity. What is your identity? And for some of us here, um, your identity is in different things. But for those of who are in Christ Jesus, our identity in who he has called us to be, which is sons and daughters of a living God. And I'm so excited again about next week and and the following weeks as we dive into Psalms 23. I'll be talking a little bit about identity. I'll be talking about about our shepherd and and what that means and what that looks like. And and so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm excited about next week and the following week. Let's continue on. Only lay a manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or I'm absent, I may hear of you that you're standing firm in. And I want to highlight this part in one spirit one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. If you are part of this church and this is your local, this is where God has placed you and say, this is my family, my local family, body in Christ. I pray that we would be in one spirit, that we would be in one mind and that we would strive side by side, not because we want to make sure that we're doing okay financially, okay, uh, um, mentally, emotionally. I mean, of course, all that stuff as well. But why one spirit, one mind? Because we have a story to share. The story of Jesus Christ. The gospel. All right? Thumbs up. Amen? Let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Philippians chapter 2. One of my favorite chapters in the Bible. So um, how about, hey, hey, Dimas, can you read this um, verse for me? Verse one, two, and three. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do not do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Awesome. Thank you, Dimas. You see there again how he's emphasizing, hey, if there's any encouragement in who? In your circumstances? If there's any encouragement in, in, in us delivering uh, groceries? Us, if there's any encouragement of uh, of 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 people giving uh, bubble tea or frosties or, or, or whatever. No, if there's any encouragement in Christ, in Christ, any comfort from love, participation in the spirit, affection, and sympathy, complete my joy. How? Same mind. I mean, I, as I'm going through this, I'm praying this as if I'm Paul and saying, ah, oh, make my joy complete, guys. By being in the same mind, same love, full accord together. Again, one mind. Let's do this all together. Why? Because Jesus has been so good. And then he says this, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility 
count others more significant than yourselves. I, I, I don't know about you, but at times um, that can be really easy because we love someone so much, but at times it can be really hard when, when there's people that you um, have find it more challenging to work with. But it says here, do nothing from selfish ambition. This is not about me, not about what I can gain, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Um, a few, few um, days ago, and um, I was ser serving others and, and uh, delivering groceries or whatever it may be or, or loving on others. And as I was driving home, here's confession time, okay? Pastor Daryl's confession time to his church. Um, as I was driving home, um, I, this came across my mind. Daryl, you're a good person. And it shocked me, caught me by surprise. Um, but as I was thinking, I was thinking about um, also like street ministry and, and Potter's Place mission that we serve over there. And, and this, this, this thought came in my mind, like you're a good person. And in a, mo in, in a second, I remember I had to rebuke that. I, I thank the Holy Spirit for revealing that in me. And maybe some of you here is like, it's not, it's, there's no problem of you thinking that you're a good person. No, but in that moment, I did sense that this was not from God. It wasn't God saying, hey, good job, keep on doing this. But it was, hey, look at you. And in that moment, I was reminded like, God, I, I'm, I'm not good. I don't do this because I'm good. I don't do this because, because man, I, I, I'm able to. Like, no, no, I do this because Jesus loved me and I deserve nothing. And if I can share anything, I mean, what a privilege that we have. And so with this verse, it says, do nothing from selfish ambition. So what I was doing was not, was, was, was as it was God pushing and drawing us to do that. But what ended up happening is selfishness and, 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 uh, 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 pride began to come up in my heart. But instead, we need to do things in humility, counting others more significant than ourselves. I need to re remind myself, I'm no better than anybody else. I tell this to the people on the streets um, whenever we go there, as I preach and I say this, I'm here not because I'm better than anyone here. I can be in your shoes right now or even worse and how I respond in, in, in this situation. But by the grace of God, he's held me. By the grace of God, he's, he's walked with me. And so I'm no better than anybody else here. Let's continue on. Oh, this, this pastor, I mean, again, you, it's hard not to go through this whole book and point out everything, but right here is amazing because right there it talks about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus, how he was the one who humbled himself from the, from the throne uh, uh, in heaven. He stepped down. Um, here I'm to worship. You know that some of you know that song. Here I'm to worship. Light the dark. You step down into darkness. Right? That's what he did. He humbled himself, taking a form of servant, and then he actually became obedient to uh, to death, even death on the cross. Let's fast forward. And later on, um, uh, Paul is encouraging this church in how to live life. And I actually preached on this a few weeks ago when we were talking about the uh, fear and trembling. And I mentioned this. One of my points was this, don't grumble. One of my points was just don't grumble. And I added don't grumble and, and, and gossip. In this season, it's so important for us to not grumble. Do all things, all things. And I've, I've said this before, but in the Greek, the word all means all. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Maybe some of you here need to take some time, like, and, and I, I'm, I'm just going to continue to go through these verses, but maybe some of you here need to take some time right now to repent. Don't, don't let this just pass by as another information, but maybe some of you here need to just zone me out right now because you need to do some repenting because you've been grumbling throughout the week, whether it's towards your parents, your, your coworkers, towards life. Maybe you're grumbling in your hearts and your mind like, oh, why is it all like this? Whatever it is. Maybe right now you need to take this moment and just set aside this distraction, right? And just put me on mute and... And really just come before God and say, God, I'm sorry for grumbling. 
Forgive me, it is a sin. Verse 15. Such beautiful words after this. It's not just like, guys, just don't grumble, okay? But why, why? That you may be blameless and innocent children of God. This is who God wants. This is what God wants from you. That you can stand before him saying, God, here I am. Every part of me, like you can search my heart as David, uh, the, the psalmist. We're going to go again next week. We're going to talk about his psalm. But David, King David, Shepherd David, he mentions, God, search me. If there's anything that's not pleasing to you, search me, oh God. Search every part of me. Are you able to pray that and ask God, God, would you search me? Or you're like, no, no, don't, don't look at me, God. I, I'm, too, I'm too shaved like, I, like, like, like uh, Adam and Eve hiding themselves from God. But he's saying, don't grumble without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. We live in a generation that's crooked and twisted. People not knowing left from right. People not knowing what's wrong and what's right. Everything we watch on TV becomes our theology, shapes our worldview, and we get confused of what's right and what's wrong. The world needs to know so that we know Jesus Continue on. Chapter three. Chapter three. And here, Paul then explicitly says, finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Right? He says, rejoice in the Lord. So in this moment, they're, they're excited. I mean, I mean, if I was reading the letter, if I was reading the letter, I'd be like, okay, Okay, um, we're, we're about to rejoice in the Lord. So tell me, tell me, Paul, tell me, Paul, what's, what's about this, with this whole rejoicing? Like, okay, we're going to get to that point. Uh, and before he gets to that point, again, then he points this out to them and says this. Says this. Oh, re, there you go. And he says this. Okay, finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble for me and is safe for you. But then he says this. Before I get there, Look out for dogs. Look out for dogs. And when he says the word dog, he's not talking about Bailey. Bailey is one of the dogs that um, Arnold, he's in this room right now. He's right there. So say hi, Arnold. He's got a dog named Bailey. It's not like, watch out for the dog. Watch out. He's going to pee everywhere. Watch out. Like, no, no, no. He's saying, watch out for these dogs. It's, 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 he's basically saying that, hey, be careful of those evildoers. And it's not a nice thing to say. And so be careful. So, so my, my, my quick word to you is be careful out there, people. Because there's dogs out there. And again, I'm not trying to belittle anybody who's, and that's not my point. But we need to be careful. You and I need to be careful as we go out there. Read more of this. And Paul then, he begins to uh, quote unquote show off of who he is, but that's not his point in showing off. His point is saying, hey, whatever I've gained, he's saying, hey, this is my resume. Check out my resume. If this is all I got, this is, this is my resume. I got all this stuff in my resume. But then he says this, whatever I gained, I, had, I counted as lost for the sake of Christ. And then he says this, indeed, I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus, my Lord. And he continues on with saying all this, but he says, in order that I may gain Christ. We preach about Jesus all the time. But I pray that as we walk and journey together, Jesus is not just theoretical, but then you begin to really have a beautiful relationship with this risen Lord. He's more than just someone who had once died for us, and that's it. He continues to work in us and through us. How? He sent his spirit, the Holy Spirit. It says this in verse 10, that I may know him, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection. Do you know the power of his resurrection? that my, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Yes, it's talking about salvation, but I want to speak to your lives right now. In this season of the coronavirus and the uncertainty of things in life, in the uncertainty of things in life in this moment, 
do you need the power of his resurrection in certain areas of your life? Do you need the power of his resurrection? Not only in, oh man, had a bad day today, but maybe there are roots in you, in your heart, in your mind, there's roots in you that you're saying, you know what, it's impossible. I'll never be healed from that emotionally. I'll never be healed by that mentally. I'll never be healed by that physically, whatever it may be. But the Bible is telling us that we can actually know the God of the universe. Like, think about that for a second, church. Think about that for a second. Maybe some of you here, maybe some of you here will be blown away by, by being able to know Justin Trudeau. Being able to know Donald Trump or whatever, you know, like, like, and you'll be like, no way would they know me. No way would he meet with me. Think about it. This is the God of the universe who created everything and he wants you to know him so that you may know him and his power, the power of his resurrection. That is my desire for you as your pastor. I desire that you may know Christ. And then Paul gets a bit crazy here. And this is something that I'm not sure if I want to say, but he says this, brothers. And what that means really is brothers and sisters in the context of where we are now. Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. What is that saying? You know what? I have a relationship with God. Would you imitate me? And continue to walk and, and follow him. It is beautiful. I want you to experience this. House for All Nations International Campus. I want you to experience this. The joy I have in following Jesus. Not because of, of all the stuff that I have. And I've mentioned this to you before. Some of you here know our, our, our uh, story in the past year. And, and God giving a house to us. And God providing for all this stuff. Like I stand here with my MacBook in front of me. It's a gift from God. My iPad, a gift from God. This monitor I have in front of me, a gift from God. This uh, webcam I have right in front of me, it's borrowed from God, from, from Martin here. Um, literally everything I have seems like it's a gift from God. Because why? Because God's been so good, not because of all those things, but his presence has been there with me. I don't care about this stuff. And some of you are like, yeah, right. No, like really, and I'm not trying to sound so wow, amazing, but, but God has been so good. I want, I, I want to experience him. He's so good. And so would you join me in following and chasing after God and, and just uh, pursuing after him? It's more than just theory, friends. Chapter four. I need to come to an end. I got confused for a second here because um, on my iPad it says 9.41 a.m. in the top there. <laughs> so, like, wow, I, I preached that long? I know I preached long, but not that long. Okay, um... Chapter four. Um, this is actually, um, I want to just preach on this actually um, this week. Um, but then uh, I, I sense that I should preach the whole thing and that you would join in looking at the whole book on your own. Again, um, for those of you who are followers of Jesus and you've been part of this church, I want you, and I'm going to say this, this is going to sound harsh, but I want you to grow up. I want you to begin to feed yourself you don't need to be spoon fed anymore and say hey here read the bible here pray more hey you know what yeah that verse is yeah so that you can feel warm and cuddly no no you gotta know who god is you gotta re know who the real god is not the warm and cuddly jesus holding the sheep i mean yes it's th that's true as well but you need to know the power of his resurrection our god is a powerful god and if you know him just as a friend you're missing out if all you know is Jesus is your friend and he saves you, you're missing out. If all you know Jesus, this might sound so bad, but if all you know is Jesus saves you and he's your savior, you're missing out. Because he's more than just a savior. He's Lord. He's alive. If he's just savior, then, then, 
again, I'm not, I'm not going doctrinally and, and theologically, but if he's just Savior, then if he's died, he's dead, then okay, well, okay, I'm saved, but he's alive. Is he at work? Like, he's alive. That's why we celebrate every Sunday. So with that, chapter 4, verse 4, um, says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So church, rejoice. Why? Because you and I have this hope. Now, if you don't know Jesus, I'm not sure if I can, I can, I can honestly say rejoice, rejoice. But for those of you who have the hope in Christ, rejoice with me. Rejoice together. When you come on Sunday, it's not about what do I get out of this. When you come on Sunday, it's not about, oh my goodness, like, all right, I wonder if the, the, the service is going to be great. I wonder what songs they're going to sing. I wonder if the song is going to touch me. If you really want the song to touch you, ask someone to touch you. And hopefully they don't have the coronavirus, right? But, but if you really want God to touch you, you got to change your mindset. Because you got to know why you are a Christian. You're not a Christian so that God can serve you. He's done that already. But you're a Christian because he has called you for a greater purpose, a greater mission. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, church, I say rejoice. Some of you need to get out of bed. Some of you need to prepare yourself every morning. And it's so funny I say that because yesterday for the first time, as far as I remember, and I know, Reti took a picture of me and I was in my shorts with this shirt on. I'm like, oh my goodness, why do you take a picture? On the one day that I wore my shorts, I usually always wear my pants. Um, I ran out of laundry and jeans, but I was, so I was wearing my shorts because I had to wake up early. And I'm like, oh, the one day now everybody thinks I wear shorts. Whatever. If you think that way, that's fine. But wake up in the morning, prepare yourself. And when you wake up, say, God, thank you. I get to see another day. What do you want me to do? I am your bond servant. I am your servant. What are you calling me to today? Be intentional. If you call yourselves disciples and follow Jesus Christ, how intentional does that look? How many hours in a week does that look like? Is it just the two hours when you're there on Sunday? Dimas, um, he, he shared with me a, a post, um, a, a, an article, a beautiful article, which says coronavirus could kill consumer Christianity. I love that. I love that. I'll just pull it out here so you can see. I mean, this is the beauty of, of uh, technology. But here, here. Coronavirus, you have it there? Do you see that? Yeah? Coronavirus could kill consumer Christianity. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that the coronavirus is killing consumer Christianity. I pray this is happening in you. Okay, um, now you're all distracted and you're going to be reading this blog post or article. But I pray, I pray, I pray that, that, that this is happening in you. This is my prayer. This is what I've been preaching about weeks and months. How we're just coming to church as consumers. Okay, let's, let's continue on. I'm going to end soon. It's still 941. Okay, all right. Um, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I see rejoice. Um, the Lord's at hand. That's a good point right there. But here, do not be anxious about anything. Now, I can tell you guys, do not be anxious about anything. And, and that should be the posture. That should be how you present yourself before God. That should be how you do things. But at the same time, pastorally, I want to say this. I understand how you are anxious about a few things or a number of things. And as a church and as a community, we want to walk with you. We want to journey with you. We want to get you to a place and a point where you, are, you can stand in the morning and things around you is going like crazy. And, and there's people who maybe family members who are dying or sick, maybe finance isn't coming in and you don't know what your next meal is going to look like. All those things are coming in and you're anxious. But here we are as a church and saying, hey, let me remind you, your hope, where your hope is, we're going to walk with you. We want to encourage you. I know you see all this stuff. Hey, hey, look together with me at the hope we have in Jesus. It's like, let's remind one another that. We need more voices of the church. We need more voices of truth because there's so much voices and distractions and noise. We need the music of the gospel and we need, to, we need the, 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 the noise of the world. We need that gone. We need the music of the gospel because the distractions of the noise of the world is so loud. 
And so let's pray, God, I want to hear the music of the gospel. Give me the music of the gospel day by day by day. And maybe it means by shutting off your phone. Maybe it means by waking up earlier in the morning and saying, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to pray together with Dimas on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. I'm going to pray because, because as we come together, we dive into the word and we just pray the word and see God speak to us and speak through us. Join us. Prayer, okay, everything in prayer, prayer, prayer. I want to emphasize that. Pray, 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 pray. We need to pray, people. We need to pray. I, I, I sound like a broken record. And I'm, I forgot, like I, I'm, I'm speaking to my, my, my local um, family here. Again, if you're, if you're um, visiting here, um, this, is, this is our heart's desire is that we would change the world, not because of our story, but the story of Jesus. But that happens not by our power and our might, but that happens by the Spirit of God. And if we are not praying, I don't know what we're doing. Church, if you are not a praying church, people who are on the serve team, if you're in the music team and you did not pray whatsoever as you came and, and served us, repent. If you, if you're, uh, I, I think, I want to thank each person who is serving and, and putting all the background work to, to all this. Like, I, I thank God for you. This cannot happen without you. But let me say this, and I want to say this as an uppercut. If you are not praying, repent. Stop playing games with God. Stop thinking that you can replace God for what you are doing. It's the spirit of God that works in us. And that's what transforms us. Amen. And that said, we pray that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts. Some of you need this, or maybe all of you need this. You need the peace of God. In this moment, you are trying to understand the peace of God. You're trying to put two and two together, okay, by knowing Jesus more, then I can have peace. I need peace, that means I will have to know Jesus, okay, a plus B equals C. It's more than that. It's a peace that surpasses your understanding. So it's not just an, an, an idea of know Jesus and you'll get peace. And you're like, oh, I've been, I'm knowing you, Jesus, but I'm on peace. No, no, you, you got to journey together. You got to process together with the Holy Spirit. I think this is Tim's favorite verse, or I forget who it was. They posted this. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellent, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What are you putting in your minds in this moment, church? What's the stuff that you're watching on Netflix? I mean, there's, there's so much distractions there. There's so much, there are good stuff, but there's also bad stuff. But how much of the stuff are you putting in your mind Think about whatever is true, honorable. So a filter, next time you watch Netflix, maybe print this out or write this out or have your Bible open and you think about this, whatever is true. Is it true? Nope. Honorable? Oh, it is. Okay, okay, I can watch that. Is it just? Yeah, was it pure? Yeah. Is it lovely? Oh, not so much. Okay, well, turn that off. Go to the next TV series or whatever maybe. I'm not trying to be legalistic, but I'm just trying to be biblical. Bam. <laughs> All right. We're almost at the end here. God's provision. Um, this is um, the most quote, misquoted, one of the most misquoted verses in the Bible. Um, right here. I can do all things through him who strengthens me, through Christ who strengthens me. Um, recently, um, a friend of mine um, asked me, hey, why do you still have that thing? Isn't it broken and everything? And and um, I jokingly um, said, well, it works. It sort of works. It still sort of works. So um, um, why? Because I've learned to have the product work 100%. And if it doesn't work 100% and now it's working like 25%, I've, I've learned to, I know how to be brought low and abound. I know in every circumstance, I learned the secret of facing plenty, right? It was working fabulously. Now it's not working so fabulously. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I gave that to them. I know it's a joke, but, but it made me think, what's the posture of our hearts 
And the things that we have, I think, I think the things that we have is a good measurement of how God um, sees us engaging with him. And so this is a question of contentment. As you can see, I was called to be a doctor in my writing, but <laughs> joke, haha. All right. I love this passage right here. Man, right now, many of us may have, this, our, our life right now, we, we don't have many. We're maybe brought low right now. Maybe we are in hunger right now. But as Paul, this is my desire for myself and for you. And we can say, I can do all things. I can be all right right now. I don't need all this stuff. Actually, all this stuff distract me from you, God. But these things, like needing more food or needing, need, I'm hungry and I need another, another meal on my table, but this has brought me to my knees in dependency on you. How many times have this brought me to my knees? How many times did plenty bring me to my knees? How many times did, did the, your, your bank account and having enough in your bank account bring you to your knees and say, God, I depend on you? But how many times when you look at your bank account and there's 0.17 cents in there and you're saying, God, I need you. God, I need to trust in you, but I'm okay. I'll rejoice because I got you. How many times did it bring you to your knees? Maybe this is a beautiful season. And in verse 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. In Christ Jesus. And finally, he says this in his last verse. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. That is what I want for each one of you here. That you experience his grace. That he becomes your Lord. That Jesus, as the anointed one, will be with your spirit. God is beautiful. And I'm I, I want to encourage you and I hope and pray that as you hear this, this is not like a smack, smack, uppercut, uh, 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 knee, whatever it's called. And, um, but I pray that you are encouraged in this and saying, wow, God wants so much for me. Some of you here, what you've heard is God wants so much from you. And let, let me scratch that out. God doesn't want so much from you. He wants so much for you. And it may look like you have to put some sides and set aside some things, but he wants things for you. He wants us to flourish. When he created the universe and the world, he created Adam and Eve. He said, hey, this is all for you. Enjoy. He wants you to flourish. And so my desire for you is that you would enjoy Christ. My desire for you in this moment as you take a time of reflection right now. And again, I ask this question, do you want to have joy? Joy is not something so far away. Joy is not something that is a good mental state of mind. It's something so very achievable. It's something so very accessible, something right in front of you that you can just grab right now in this moment. We're going to take a time to respond through songs. And Mel and the team, as you lead us, point us to Jesus, point us to the love of God. So do you, do you want to know joy? Simply get to know Jesus. And if, if you're not sure how to do that, journey together with us. Journey together with those who have a passion and deep love for Jesus. Join us in loving Jesus. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conclude there. I want to say one last thing. Um, I was talking to Dimas. I've been, I've been hanging out with him a lot, um, first and foremost, because he was living with us after he came back from Ukraine. Um, but then just being able to chat with him, I mean, it's so encouraging to have a brother in Christ who loves Jesus and is passionate for the church. And that's why I hang out with him. And I don't say this um, to to blow up his head and make him feel good. That's not, but, but I'm just so grateful for a brother in Christ who loves Jesus and tries to pursue Jesus and at the same time loves the church, loves you guys. That, that, that when, when, when he doesn't see like things um, like, oh man, why don't they pray? Or why don't they know? It's like it just it stirs his, his, his heart and his mind. Um, 
but um, I was sharing with him um, yesterday morning, Saturday morning, and before we had a meeting, and I was just saying some things that I sensed God was saying to me, and, um, and, and one of the things that I mentioned was um, in, in um, 2 Chronicles 7.14, I was reminded of this verse a number of times, whether it's through personally God was saying to me and also through other people, but the Second Chronicles 7.14 says this, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them their sins. Wow. Let me say that again. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal, hear from the heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. For many of you, your next step is prayer. It's so accessible, but yet you haven't taken that step. For so many of you, the next step isn't all these other stuff that you need to do and serve and all that stuff. I mean, those things are, are, are great and good, but your next step is prayer. Dimas then shared with me and he said, crazy, because this morning I read this passage. Jeremiah 5, through 23. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Will you not tremble at my presence? Who have placed the sand as the bound of the sea by perpetual degree that it cannot pass beyond it. And though it waves, and though its waves toss to and fro, and yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet they cannot pass over it. But this people has a defiant and rebellious heart. They have revolted and departed. This is the exact message that I copied and pasted without his permission. <laughs> but he highlighted that, do you not fear me? Church, do you not fear God? Crazy. God is calling us to be a people of prayer before we do anything else. So church, repent together with me. Repent together with me. And as we come right now to a close in this sermon, um, I pray and ask, would you take this time um, before God and just humbly and say, God, turn me back to you. And I'm not saying this maybe as individuals. You got you to gotta know this church. The Bible was not written to individuals. Yes, it addresses individual, it addresses people, groups, and all of that. But the Bible is written to the church. The Bible is written to communities. And if I'm saying we need to repent because we're not praying, and I'm saying us as a community, we're not praying. You may be praying at home. That's great. You may be praying uh, um, as you go to work and, and on a daily basis. That's great. But we need to be a praying community. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with that. And I pray, oh, Holy Spirit, let's pray together. Oh, Holy Spirit, would you come in such a beautiful, loving way right now? I pray that my words would not be anything that convicts people's hearts and their minds, but I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would do a work in people's hearts and minds. Because as I've experienced this past week, when you come in, people respond. When you come in, either people respond or they reject you, but you come in such a beautiful way. And so would you do this in this moment as we sing to you, as we lift our voices to you, be magnified, be glorified, be lifted high as we look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you and God bless you. <laughs>